Hey everyone, Amy and Emily here. We are in Dallas, Texas at the Turning Point USA Young Women's Leadership Summit and we're about to do a Women on the Street segment to find out exactly how many of young women here are not, not your, your average, average gun, gun girls. girls. Let's get to it. Well, we had a very fun time these past few days talking to um, all the women and people at the Turning Point USA yes, Young we Women's did. Leadership Summit. And we did some women on the street things. And now we're back. We've got our resident gun girl expert here, yes. Bree <laughs> Michael Warner. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Owner of Tactical Firearm Instructor certified in all things firearms. She knows she knows it all. That's why we brought her back. <laughs> yes. And I thought it was interesting. We wanted to do some women on the street questions, kind of gauging how much people know. Because, you know, we're all about educating. We want to inspire. We want to inform. And we want to make sure that we are always bringing you valuable content and teaching you and, and helping you further along in your journey. And so yes. we went around mm -hmm. over the course of the day and asked some, we asked four Four or five questions, I can't remember now. And it was interesting to hear yep. the answers that we got. And you know, some of these questions might be things that you don't even know mm -hmm. and or are a little confused or unclear about. And we are here with Bree. We're gonna break them down, we're gonna yep. talk about them, we're gonna get set everyone straight. So let's just dive Excellent. right in. Awesome. Let's the do first it. question we asked. If you hear the phrase going hot, what does that mean? <laughs> so I, I heard there was some pretty funny answers, one of which may have involved Florida. What comes to mind? Florida. Somewhere that has hot weather. I don't know. Being outside, I suppose. <laughs> this time. <laughs> yes. Going to Florida? Going somewhere hot? So I was hoping to hear, like, decked head to toe, like, fashionable, yes. you know? Like, you're going hot to the range. Yes. Going hot to the range, you know? Well, I guess it actually means, like, guns loaded and I'm firing, but I guess it could mean that you should always be wearing red lipstick going hot like you're gonna go out and be hot going hot and and I like that you know yeah. you got to look good even at the range but no in all seriousness so going hot like it's really funny when people are getting into the gun world like a lot of there's so much lingo yes. that oh, yeah. we, we take for granted uh, it's getting really popular I don't know I just think about something fun just like okay like somebody's just gonna go hot like oh I don't know I think about someone being on like a hot streak like shooting a basketball <laughs> Got to get my guns out. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> um, is that when a hot guy with a beard walks by? Going hot, technically, uh, would be a phrase. So if you went to a, a range, whether you're in a class or you're just going to a public range, the terminology going hot means that that range now, that line is now active, and it's basically the go for everybody to begin firing their firearm if they should so choose. Just kidding. Um, it's a phrase used to um, kind of introduce that you are going to be firing your firearm. Uh, my gun is loaded. Nice job. Uh, it's hot, like the range is hot. It's active, people are gonna be shooting. Uh, so, you know, if you're, if you're at a range, if you go into a class and you hear the term going hot, that means you better make sure you have your ear pro on, your eye pro on, and be ready to fire, and make sure that you're staying in a safe line with everybody else, so yep. everybody has a good day. Excellent. And usually, who is who? Who can say going hot when you're at a range? Typically, you would have your range safety officers. Okay. Um, they would generally either it's that or it's an instructor that mm -hmm. would give you that that command. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's it's one of those things where it just depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all okay. situation dependent. Uh, but you're going to hear that more often than not. I, because if you go to like a public yeah. range, it's pretty much it's the assumption the is it's yeah. always hot. Right. right. It's always an active uh, fire so line. So it is a safe bet to always have your ear and eye pro on and ready 
while you're at yes. the range, even if you aren't the one that is up at the firing line ready to go. Um, and I know it's a phrase too that it's good to to let people know, hey, if there's some scenarios where you might be out there shooting and you just want to give everybody a heads up. Like mm -hmm. it hasn't been declared it's a cold range yet or yep. anything like that. And just to let everybody know before you start firing, hey, I'm going hot. That means put your eye and ear pro on, yes. and it's a courtesy thing. Yes, exactly. We talk a lot about being courteous at the range, and that's one of those courteous commands. And also, like, hey, I'm about to, I'm about to try out this new gun, so make sure your eyes and ears are on. Yeah, yeah. Because you know. a lot of times people, you know, you you take things for granted, and you sometimes people get on the range and they forget. You know, mm -hmm. you're, yeah. you're busy loading magazines and doing all these other things, and you don't realize, like, oh wait, my ear pro is like up right. on top of my head, my sunglasses are off. So yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's it's one of those things where you always want to be not only cognizant of your own safety, yeah. but the safety of those around yeah. you. That's really important. If I hear guns going off and I didn't hear, I'm like, could you give us a heads up? Exactly. Right. That you right. Were going well, hot. well, people presume. <laughs> Too, if you're on an outdoor range, that doesn't really make a difference, and it does. Yeah. I mean, in an indoor range, obviously, the, the sound really does amplify. Sure. Yeah. But even on an outdoor range, yeah. if you're within close proximity, it's loud, and the mm -hmm. last thing you want to yep. do is either scare the bejesus out of the person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, great one. So what let's go this? to the next one, which next I think question? is like w maybe the funniest one, or like I don't know. Oh yeah, oh, no. it's this pretty funny. <laughs> I love this one. So what's the first thing you think of when you hear the term magazine? Vogue, Cosmopolitan, all the stables. <laughs> so uh, we are at a conference with about 1,400 young ladies. So I could imagine that this went in a lot of uh, yes, a lot of directions. Yes. One of which might involve some fashion magazines. Uh, yes, yeah. Cosmopolitan Vogue. was one of them for sure. <laughs> all right, yeah. I want to say something I usually don't read, honestly. Um, woman. <laughs> Cover girl. So, yes, yeah, so a magazine, while it is a, a lovely uh, article, publication. A publication that you can review, uh, in the gun world, a magazine would be the actual, it's the device that actually holds your rounds of ammunition. It's what you put into the gun, and then it feeds uh, the each round into your chamber. Yep. Just kidding. <laughs> um, it is a device that holds your bullets that you insert into your weapon. Uh, guns, um, fa fast firing guns. Okay. Uh, gun. I feel like a gun magazine. Guns. Gun. Bottom of a gun. Oh, like a right, like the bullets in a, in the mag, like for the gun. Okay. Well, my firearm. Put the magazine in the firearm. Magazine is what holds your ammunition. So the biggest thing about a magazine uh, that I, I'm a, such a stickler on is you, oftentimes you'll hear somebody refer to it as a clip. <laughs> as a clip. Yes. Uh, clip? <laughs> mm, clip? Yeah, magazine clip. Please, 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 please. You've heard it here today. And I want, I want all the women listening, even if you're a guy too, it doesn't matter. I want you to be the person that actually refers to it as the right thing. Yes. Please do not call. If you're putting in the device, the magazine, uh -huh. <laughs> that goes into any kind of semi-automatic, any kind of uh, handgun, right. rifle, yeah. anything like that. Hey, also, that you're not putting your bullets into the magazine. Can we yes. also, yeah, like, we, we can we also clear, get that lingo down yes. really quick? You're not putting bullets ammo. into a clip. <laughs> yes. Right. You're Which we should explain. Your, so yes. a bullet is, it's the actual, it's, it's basically... The projectile. The projectile, exactly. That's that's in the cartridge. The cartridge as a whole is the is round. Yeah, yes. Those are mm -hmm. those terms are used sort of you know interchangeably, but yes, uh, the bullet is actually part of the cartridge, which is like the the actual round so itself. So you load your ammo, ammo into yes. the magazine. Your magazine yes. and there you go. The yes. magazine that gets loaded into your firearm. Exactly. So ladies, if you hear your boyfriend or your father <laughs> or whoever like Use tell, clip. talking about your clip, you need to be like, uh, 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 drop some knowledge. That's on a them. magazine. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> Please correct them. Please they correct them. they will love you and hate you in the same yes, breath. Exactly. That's okay. Exactly. But you will be an educated gun girl. Yes, and exactly. get, some, get some good street cred on you there. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Our next question, I even got stumbled in trying to just ask it because in my head I knew sort of like where it was going to go and, and how confusing it could be. But it's describe a scenario where you would rack a slide. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can only and just break that whole like, thing down. Yeah. It just rack aside. I mean, I, I like some of the perplex, perplex looks I got I, yeah. and like that we got at, I was <laughs> they were just like huh? Um I don't know. 
Rack a slide. I'm not really sure what that term means. Okay. Uh, I've never heard of the term, I have to say. Okay. I have no clue. No That's clue. That's okay. That's fine. Rack a slide. I actually have no idea about that one, so I don't know. <laughs> I literally can't tell you on that one. Rack a slide. <laughs> We, we've been uh, we've been getting that one a lot. Yeah, that's that's. I'm sure I say that again. I'm I like, have like rack a slide. I have yeah. visions. Yeah. Of people is... like thinking of like a dance move. I know. They're like rack the slide. Like, I think slide. Um, I, mean, I believe we have somebody who said, "Is that something related to laundry?" Um, <laughs> that sounds like something for laundry, but I know it's for something with guns. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't I know. I want to know what kind of action packed yeah. laundry that is. Yeah, well, I and I also I think, too, um, the confusion was I think they were thinking that maybe it was a little bit more um, substance to it when it really is just, it was just it's as simple, simple as yes. racking the slide. Yep. So it's a new one. It's, it's as simple as just like racking the slide on your gun. Yeah, rack a slide. Okay, cool. So, Brie? Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> racking the slide uh, is a very simplified concept. So, any scenarios, basically that what that's doing is that more often than not, which you're more commonly going to use it for racking the slide, is when you actually want to load one of those rounds into the chamber. So once you've put your magazine in the firearm, <laughs> you're going to go ahead and rack that slide. And what that's going to do is it's actually going to take the top round off of your magazine and then load it into your chamber, therefore making your gun ready to fire. Uh, so, um, is that cocking your gun? I love a good rack. At the range. <laughs> At the gun show? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Um, when I'm on the range. <laughs> awesome. Um, when you're getting ready to shoot or um, if a bullet becomes stuck or there's a, like a misfire or something, like you need to get dislodge the bullet. Excellent. Well, either test fire my weapon or when I have a misfeed, uh, you know, anytime I need to cycle a bullet. One of the coolest things in the world when you learn how to do it. Yes. It just looks It looks so cool. Oh, yeah. And it I have really does. It looks cool when you know how yeah, to like, get in there, grip it. Really do it. Slide, and I have to say, like, I want to say this, especially for the women audience out there. So often I'm, I'm, I hear from women like, oh, I don't, I can't do it. I don't have the hand strength. I don't know who told you that lie, but I'm going to tell you right there. It's all about leverage and it's all about being taught the proper way right, and like how technique. to rack that Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm telling you, any woman can do it. I've seen so many women of different hand strengths, and once they've learned how to properly rock that slide, yep. they're able to do mm -hmm. it. And I think that's the most intimidating. Well, it was yeah. for me. It was the yes. most, that and loading my magazine was the most intimidating piece of having a semi-automatic firearm in my house mm -hmm. before I knew any of this stuff because, like a lot of women out there, I always said, I, I have to do that thing where I push the thing back right. and do that thing. Yes. And I didn't know it was called racking a slide. And for me, I really did think, I just, I can't do it and what if I find myself in a scenario where my husband's gone right honey can you just please like load my gun mm -hmm. for me so it's yep. like ready to go and the most empowering thing in the world was that that initial step of being able to rack that side and then knowing I can rack a 1911 I can rack exactly. the um I can rack the side right of, what once you the, get down that eagle that it technique. doesn't matter what it you is know. you can do it right. yeah you know and so mm -hmm. like that you know that would be predominantly when you would rack a side in another situation um that you know, people should know about is that if you have a malfunction, there are occasions for whatever reason uh, you can have bad ammo where it fails to fire. So therefore, that means that the 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 chain reaction doesn't happen once that primer has been struck in, in your handgun. So the round may not go off. And so in that case, you have a malfunction. You need to clear that malfunction. You need to clear that round out of the chamber. I had so one girl tell me that yesterday. Oh, oh really? I was, nice. she goes, Good for her. She goes, loading it or clearing a malfunction. I'm like. I am so that's utterly like impressed right of, now. That's like one of one awesome. of the things is like a, a, a lot of the girls were like, "Oh no, I don't know anything about firearms." And all of a sudden, like we'd ask, and they'd like name everything. I'm like, "You know a lot." You know exactly. Like, yeah. How, how, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think so many women don't identify as like gun girls, right. so they just assume that they they don't have the information. But right. women are really 
very intelligent and they pick up on things because they listen. Right. Uh, and I do think I'm not surprised that you had a lot of women that were like, I don't know anything. And then you right. come to find out like, no, you they actually know do. more they than they do. They do a lot more than they do. It, yep. Going back to the rack of slide, I'll need to find it. And I'm sure you guys have seen it, but there is a really good graphic. It's made its way, I think, through social media, but it, it's like a, uh, oh, it's like a cutout, right? It's, it's a, Cut out graphic, and I don't want to say it's like cartoon, but it's like a kind of like a like digital, an animated. yeah, animated digital drawing that kind of shows you sort of what yep. happens and how that round gets put into the chamber when you rack a oh, slide. Oh yeah, that is and a great, that, that whole, is a great that whole yeah. kind of mm -hmm. like sequence. So um, mm -hmm. we will find it, and then we'll make sure that it's linked because I think that would that. That visual will help, will help well, to and kind I of think put it takes that some together. Of the fear out too right. when you actually know how the firearm operates right. and you can see it. I think I saw that in my basic handgun safety course that I took. Yes. Yeah. It was one of the most eye opening yeah. things for me well, to see you it learn. happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you learn the mechanics of it. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things you learn, especially when you're talking about racking the slide, is that it's a full motion of movement mm -hmm. that you have to make. And if yeah. you don't and you, you do something called like short stroking it, you're basically not making the gun through its full right. full process right. and therefore that round actually doesn't get picked up and it doesn't load into the chamber and that's a big deal mm -hmm. if you think you've you've racked that slide right. you didn't and you go to fire and there's there's no ammunition in right. the right. gun well yeah. and which leads to like knowing the condition of your fire yep. yep you know making sure that you know if that round is loaded in there yes. and ready to go for the next thing so okay awesome thank you so much Bree for that well, what was our next we've question? got yeah. I'm gonna actually switch the last two and save okay. save the next one for for last <laughs> okay but <laughs> all right, all right. Um, I don't even remember what order they were in. <laughs> but the the next one is when you're heading to the gun range, what are four essentials you bring? And I love oh. the oh, variety of uh, <laughs> answers. Subjective. Yeah, yes, it because is. what I need versus what you need are different. Exactly. However, there are basic essentials sure. that you yes. need to make sure that you're bringing. Um, earplugs, eye gear, um close-toed shoes, and probably jacket, as well as the gun, of course, but, um, let me see, your gun, obviously, <laughs> I don't think I don't it's know. not, I don't know, um, I, I have no clue, I, goggles, um, ear, ear, uh, muffs, and, um, those are the only two I can remember, a gun, um, <laughs> I would say glasses or some type of protective gear, um, a bottle of water, and uh, um, somebody to help watch my form. Uh, ear equipment, um, definitely you want to make sure your eyes are protected. Um, what else is there? Make sure you have close-toed shoes. I always hear that's a big one. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, Safety equipment, safety equipment. Um, That's good. Uh, ear, ear protection, uh, eye protection, firearms, ammunition, and some cool shirts to wear. Gotta have fashion, always. Um, well, the glasses and the ear protection, a gun, targets, and, well, that's it. I don't know the answer to that question. Ooh, earplugs, firearm, case, and my Alexos. <laughs> Eyes, ears, um, lots of ammo, <laughs> and maybe a mentor, an instructor. I like it. Um, earplugs, um, I double up, so <laughs> earplugs and earmuffs. Um, a high-necked shirt because otherwise they go down your shirt. Um, a like safety safety glasses and my gun and ammo. Ooh, um, headphones, safety glasses, um, bullets fully loaded, and guns. Eyes to protect your beautiful lashes um, and ears so you can pretend you're not listening to anybody talking to you. Um, really pretty shoes. Um, what else? What else do I bring to the range? Uh, definitely my firearms and a good attitude, safe, ready to, ready to have fun. For essentials, um, my gun, um, a target, maybe some earplugs, and myself.
so Bree, what would let's 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 name the four yeah. essentials, and okay. then we can kind of talk about some of the others that we sure. heard. Sure. Well, I mean, four essentials. I, I'm not even going to. I, I kind of, uh, I don't really want to include the firearm and the ammunition, although that is obviously very much essential, and th those that's the critical part. But that's also assuming that you're going to the range and you have your own firearm. Right. Maybe you're going to the range and right. you're renting a firearm, yep. or you might be going to a range that requires you to buy ammunition there because mm -hmm. they want to monitor that. So th the firearm and the ammunition is really de Optional. situational dependent sure, yeah. on what your, your circumstances. Uh, as far as Things beyond that, uh, we talked about hearing, you know, eye and ear protection. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hunter, hunter, hunter percent, you have to bring that. You, you really want to make sure, especially if you are someone that's going to start shooting a lot more, invest. Because it's like cry, yes. you know, cry once or buy once, cry once. And if you if you invest in good ear pro, yes. uh, you want to invest in especially good eye pro. Yep. There's a lot of junk out there yep. and it's really important you know you never know if you're gonna have any brass that flies back you could you can have shrapnel some ranges might have a, a metal backstop and sometimes you'll get little pieces of shrapnel yep. that may come back it's very rare so I don't want to scare anybody but you just never know with right. ballistic grade too for your glasses yes, yes. I used to take my Ray-Bans to the range yes. and I've cute cute little cute. like fashionista you know yep. things you go buy for 10 bucks yep. not a good idea yeah. you really want to get you need legit Yes. Legit so range glasses. And, and they're not mm -hmm. expensive. I mean, the, the price points really do vary, but you want to make sure that you get something that's specifically graded mm -hmm. right. for right. going to the range. Well, you can't replace your eyesight. Nope. So exactly. you know nope. what? Bad or like, hearing. Yes. yes. Yeah, or your hearing. That. You're yes. exactly right. And even with that, something to consider if you're buying iPro is where are you typically shooting? Are you shooting mostly outdoors mm -hmm. in bright sunlight? Are you shooting mostly indoors in an indoor range? Where yeah. That will affect whether you buy uh, you know, dark tinted sunglasses or eye protection or clear eye protection. So you really want to kind of buy uh, based on where you're actually yeah. shooting. Yeah. Uh, and then, like I said, really good ear pro. Uh, another essential I, I personally like to bring, I mean, you want to make sure that you bring water, especially like if you're at an outdoor range. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that you get very overheated, you get yeah. dehydrated, because you can be out there, you know, for a few hours and maybe you're taking a class and you're out yeah. there all day long. Yeah. Uh, bringing water is really important. It's something that we kind of all yeah. forget mm -hmm. about. Uh, I like to personally bring snacks. I mean, uh, I think we all are in the <laughs> snack boat. We love snacks. Bring in a good snack. Yep. Good snack. But again, uh, be mindful. So here's the thing. Here's the slippery slope. So bring snacks. But when you're dealing with firearms, and especially if you're, you know, deer on the range or loading magazines, you're, you're being exposed yes. to lead. And lead is fine. You don't really want to be exposed to it too much, but you definitely don't want to ingest it. Yep. So I would say if you're going to bring snacks, bring things that um, are either protected, like in a wrapper mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily have to physically touch, yeah. or if you if you do have something like a sandwich or things that your, your fingers are going to actually make contact with, uh, make sure to go ahead and wash your hands right. with cold water. Yeah. Uh, and especially cold water. You don't want to yes. wash your hands with hot water because what it does is it opens your pores and invites yep. all that, that mm -hmm. toxin in. So wash your hands with cold water before you have your snacks. Right. And Love I would it. say, like, if you're going to have snacks at the range, like, not in your lane. Not no. while you're shooting. Right. Like, step right, back, exactly. yeah. take your break, have yeah. your snack, and then re-energize and get back to it. Yes. Like, yep. Absolutely. And I, and I, well, I don't want to add, I know we talked about four. Those are probably my top four. But the, the fifth bonus, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, is, is a whole, having a good attitude. I think when yeah. people are beginning, especially beginning to start shooting, they're super intimidated, yeah. and it's it is. I mean, I still get intimidated going. Oh, sure. So it's, it's, just, it's it's something. I think the good attitude at the range and in life. Yeah. Yes, and and that really will impact your experience as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I gotta be honest, it's like most things in life. If you have a good attitude, you're gonna just right. perform better. Right. Yeah. And you're you're gonna find that you're gonna enjoy yourself, and therefore your shooting mm -hmm. and your accuracy is going to be positively impacted. Love it. One uh, essential that I want to add to that is I like to bring a notebook and a pen because I oh typically yeah, like to do. write down yeah. I like like it. what I've shot or if there's anything specific that I've noticed in my shooting that I need to kind of work on for the next yep. time that yeah. I'm like and just kind of like track. Well, that's like, great yeah. too, especially if you're trying different ammunition because mm -hmm. different ammunition is going to function different in your firearm depending you know it's like yeah, every yeah. gun kind of has a preference of what ammo it likes the best yeah. oh yeah and you're going to see a performance shift and mm -hmm. as long as you know what your baseline is you can make notes that's yeah. a great idea Very making true. notes of, right you know different ammo it's uh, my you know weird organizational yeah. part that, right? yeah. <laughs> i love it your planning i like your my planning, my planning. <laughs> so our next and final question which i believe is very important the four rules of gun safety um 
I gosh, goodness gracious. Um, definitely make sure you know where the safety is. Make sure you know where you're pointing it. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's the only things I can think of. I've never really went out shooting before. I only went once. Okay. So the only, like, with the rules, the person that was teaching me how to shoot, it was just like, don't point at the person and mm -hmm. um, um, keep your guns to the ground. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Um... Okay, uh, I've taken a gun safety class, but I can't remember them. That's okay. Um, uh, definitely always make sure that when you hold a, a firearm, you make sure it is uh, unloaded or just that the safety is on. Um, uh, I guess make sure that you, um, I'm trying to think, um, you don't touch the trigger. Um, I don't know the other ones. Um, I'm gonna guess. Uh, one, always have it unloaded. Um, that's all I can think of. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. I think I need to like brush up on my my gun roll safety. Um, always keep the safety on okay. until you're ready to shoot. Um, always point the barrel to the ground. I'm just going off of like what my dad no. has told me in the past. Um, I guess target practice and always make sure no one's in front of you. Um, and I don't know, I don't think I have a fourth. What are they? Uh, we, will, we will get to that. Oh, we will okay. get to Is that. that. Like a big reveal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, never leave your without, what, is it the safety? Yeah, never leave without the safety. Um, never point your gun at anybody unless you're wanting to shoot them. Um, let's see, always keep it holstered unless you're using it. And um, I don't know the fourth one. If you had to take a wild guess, what would what would another basic gun safety rule be? Um, don't give a gun to a child. <laughs> I like it. The four basic rules, I would say keep your hand off the trigger if you're not shooting. Uh, make sure that you're not pointing it at anyone when you don't need to be. Um, and make sure that everything's loaded, properly cleaned. That's what I'm going to go with. All right. Gun safety, um, never point at anyone. Um, let's see. Eye protection? Maybe. Um, what else? Don't point at your toes? Okay. okay. And finger off the trigger? Yeah, um, always treat it like it's loaded. Never point at anything you don't want to shoot. Keep your finger off the trigger. And um, put the safety on. Four rules. Yes. Um, finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Um, keep your firearm in a safe uh, direction at all times and don't pull the trigger until you're ready to destroy whatever's beyond um, you know your target and um, always wear a lipstick. Uh, the last one, I like that one. I love a good red lip so you know I'm for you on that one. So gun safety. Um, one, fingers off the trigger out to the side. Um, Two, always check for loaded gun, check the top. Um, three, uh, never point your gun at another person. Always keep it aimed away from anything that could be harmful. Um, four, never shoot at anything without knowing what's behind it. Yeah, the first rule is keep your finger off the, or first rule, all guns are always loaded. Second rule, keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are aligned and you intend to shoot. And rule number three, never let the muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy. And I'm not sure what the fourth is. When you're learning, those they will drill those into your head over and over and over yep. again. Uh, but you know, there are still moments where it's it's funny. You you get like a brain fart, and it's yeah. it's probably because you you, just, you get to a point where you know it so well. You just you in inherently just. Do right. it. Like, well, yeah. well, right. I think with, with, think uh, I with had the to four think rules. about it when I was yeah. when yeah. I was asking people. I was like, <laughs> if I was asked this question right now, uh, okay, good. Right. Like I had to think. But we them. just we we abide by we know right. the rules, so we abide by yes. them. Right. We don't it actually becomes, have to recite them. Exactly. Yes, and it becomes yeah. that muscle memory that we mm -hmm. always talk mm -hmm. about. So. Number one, uh, you want to make sure that you always treat your firearm as if it's loaded at all times. You know, that's a, that's a big deal because you can come onto a range, whether it's your own firearm or it's somebody else's. Uh, people get very complacent, and that's when accidents happen. Yes. And you need to know, like you said, the condition of that firearm. 
but even more importantly, just treat it like it's loaded. Right. Don't mess around with it. This is not the time and place to be silly. You know, this is not the time and place to make silly, fun, like, photo ops. You know, right. photos on the range are fine. Be smart about it. Yep. Don't, you know, this is not a, a glorified social media moment. Like, really, you're, you're dealing with something mm -hmm. that could potentially be very dangerous. Right. So take it seriously. Uh, so make sure that you're always treating your firearms as if they're loaded at all times. Very, very critical. And I just want to just touch on that real quick. And that means, like, when you're when you're at a, at a friend's house or whatever and yes. they want to show you yes. a uh, firearm, you always treat that one, one as it's loaded mm -hmm. as well. And do not be afraid. Do not feel embarrassed to check it yourself yeah. and make sure that yes. you, you know it's 100% it clear. Yeah, absolutely. Just, I, I wanted to point that well, out. Well, it's one of those, if you're practicing that and putting that into practice, no yes, matter what, it, it's even gonna, when you go to gun right. stores, like if you're going down to right, academy, exactly. like I still check it. It's yeah. just something I practice and I do every single time I pick up a firearm. Well, even if I watched you clear it, I'm still going to yes, check exactly. it. Yes, exactly. And I think uh, mm -hmm. talking about that, like going when you're at a gun store and you do that, that also then shows the associates at the gun stores oh, that you have an understanding and a, and a respect for the firearms and that you know that basic yep. piece to do. Yes, and they're not going to try to sell you something silly right. that you don't really need because they they see that you actually have some of that basic knowledge. Right. right. And you're going to you're going to garner so much right. more respect from them for yep. sure. All right. Yep. So two. Second, so yeah, second, so second rule. one is you once you've you've gotten to the acceptance of you're going to treat all firearms as if they're loaded. You want to make sure that you never point that muzzle. So when we mean by muzzle, we mean the, basically the end of the barrel, the, the shooting end of the barrel. You never want to point that at anything that you're not willing to destroy. Yep. Uh, and what we mean by that is that when you start to handle firearms, and this is a big thing even at ranges, for example, when you, when you bring your gun box up onto that line and you go to open it, you should always kind of just double check real quickly, see what's orientation your firearm is pointed. If you open your gun box and it's actually the muzzle's pointed at you or the people kind of in and around your space, close that lid, turn it around, yep. making sure that that muzzle is pointed downrange. It's so, it's such a, a, a moment of etiquette that people will witness and they will see again that you actually yes. know some mm -hmm. of this information. Uh, and it's just, it's really important. It's for everybody's safety. So you never want to point that muzzle yep. at anything. Right. Uh, if you're dealing with a, a firearm on the range, maybe you're taking a class. Uh, if it's not holstered, then you want to make sure that that, that muzzle is yep. pointed. I, I personally, I, I like and recommend pointing it down to the yeah. ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are situations that maybe you have to uh, point it up to the sky. Yep. Uh, you know, maybe you're you have small children uh, kind of around you, and you know, so you basically important. that line yep. of sight is where their 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 heads are. So there's there are certain situations that call for sure. port up. I I prefer though most of the time, muzzle down. That's usually a safe bet. Great. Uh, so that would be number two. Number two. Okay. Number, number three. three. <laughs> number three. So, okay, great. So we know how to handle the weapon because it's, it's going to retreat like it's loaded. We're going to have the muzzle down. Number three is do not place your finger on that trigger unless you've made a absolute conscious decision to fire. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that if you are in a self-defense situation, when you've made that decision yep. to go ahead and draw your fire and present and to put it up on target, your finger doesn't actually go on that trigger mm -hmm. until you've absolutely, yep. without a doubt, you are planning to take that shot. Yep. And if even if it's in a, a classroom or in a range, same thing. Mm -hmm. You don't ever want that finger to be on the trigger yep. if your muzzle is down, if it's anywhere but on the intended target. Right, absolutely. And what is the fourth and final one before we have sure. to say goodbye to Bree? So the fourth one is one that I think a lot of people tend to miss because they, you know, they don't think about it. but it's knowing your target, which seems like an obvious mm -hmm. thing. Like, uh, yeah. yes, of course. Like, I, I see my what my a target is. I'm going to point my gun at it. But what's what's critical about this fourth one that a lot of people miss is that it's what's beyond that target. Yeah. It's very easy when we go to, like, a static range. So what I mean by that is, like, we're at, like, a normal range, whether it's indoor or outdoor. Mm -hmm. And we're on a line, and the targets are all down range from us. And it's very easy to live in that 180 degree world. Right, right. And so we know, like, oh, there's the target stand, and then behind it is like a backstop. It's going to catch Burr basically yeah. you know, the lead. Mm -hmm. And that's fine and good, but the reality is, is that in a, in a de defensive situation, and in, in a most of reality, yeah. we operate in a 360. And so what that means is that your intended target might be the first visual that you yes, have, but right. you have to also understand that there are things behind it that are now compromised and vulnerable because your firearm, that, that bullet, 
may not stop once right. it's penetrated the intended target. Yep. It might over penetrate and it will proceed to continue until it f eventually stops, but right. you don't know what's behind. So the fourth one is really important, especially when you start thinking about a self-defense perspective with yes. firearms. Mm -hmm. The target, but more importantly, what's beyond it. Yes, and that is absolutely something yep. that as you get more into your training, you can practice on and you can focus and everything. But Brie, thank you so yeah, much thank for you coming. Yes, so much. I love it. Breaking down this gun lingo And I love for giving us. the women the information because yes. I want you we guys so to just be so knowledgeable and yes. look like you know what you're doing mm -hmm. because it's going to really Really boast your confidence. It yep. will. And if you want any more tips and tricks on any of the stuff that you've heard us talk about, we're going to put it all um, online for everybody to read about. But you can go follow Emily at Style Me Tactical. You can follow Brie Tactical NYC yep. on Instagram. Um, you can follow me at the Amy Robbins or Alexa Athletica. But we hope you will all join us for some more fabulous interviews here at the Turning Point USA Young Women's Leadership Summit. <laughs>